If your vegetables aren't doing well, you might check your soil, and you don't have to be a chemist to learn very quickly that vegetables need a pH that is balanced. If it's not, the vegetables you're hoping to eat won't do well. It's the very same principle in the ocean. For a number of years, scientists have been sounding the alarm about something called ocean acidification. Greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels can accumulate in the atmosphere, causing the ocean's pH to become unbalanced. This is the Thank You Ocean Report. In places where we're recording long-term oceanic pH data, we do see increases in the surface PCO2 of the ocean and a commensurate decline in the pH. Gretchen Hoffman is a professor of marine biology at UC Santa Barbara. The sources that are probably most familiar to us are the use of carbon-based fuels, burning fuel in your car, carbon dioxide coming from manufacturing plants, coal-powered processes. And what Gretchen studies is how organisms might adapt to this change. And organisms have a variety of options. For example, migration might occur. So the species might move to more suitable habitat. They might be able to stay in place and acclimate to the conditions, so use the tools and plasticity they have to stay where they are and reproduce. They might also be able to adapt. Rapid evolution might be possible, so the animals literally come up with a new solution to deal with warmer temperatures. Some species will be unable to adapt and could go extinct. One question being studied is to determine which species are able to adapt to a changing ocean. We're learning that some species are fairly tolerant so that their tolerance windows can kind of bend a little bit and they're able to tolerate more acidic and corrosive conditions than we thought. On the other hand, there are some species that are less resilient and less tough and it looks like they do not do very well under these corrosive conditions. And very profound questions are being asked, such as which organisms seem to be particularly vulnerable? And if they're vulnerable, are they really ecologically significant or economically significant? So are they an important fishery species? Because ultimately, what we want to do is to be able to look forward and sort of forecast and predict where we might have a real shortfall on the services that the ocean provides for us, be it food, food security, filtering of water, water quality. In Gretchen's laboratory, they are experimenting by raising sea urchins under higher temperatures than they would normally be used to and under CO2 stress that may occur in the future. We also then are going out in the environment and using sensors to try to measure present day pH and to try to really understand what their environment is like right now, how their tolerances relate to what they're experiencing in the field and what that tells us about where they might be going in the future and how well they'll do. The science stands a really good chance of identifying vulnerabilities in California that will have real consequences for people's jobs and for food security. The reasons Californians should pay attention is we might have some surprises coming where all of a sudden estuarine regions or parts of our coast that are already kind of vulnerable could suddenly take out a really important stock or a fishery and change recreation and food for our state. We are all going to need to pay attention to climate change and ocean acidification and to what scientists are learning about the species which may be the most vulnerable. And we'll also be hearing more about adaptations to change for species we depend upon as well as for the human species. My thanks to Gretchen Hoffman, Remember, the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn more, please visit thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.